Hey everyone, Three Sons Restorations here with the second video and a two-part series introducing my compressor setup. In this video we will be looking specifically at the construction and use of my homemade compressed air dryer. You'll remember from part one of this video series that one of the primary objectives in my plumbing design is to remove liquid water from the air lines before it can reach the tools I'll be using, such as a blasting gun or a paint gun. First, however, I'd like to take a minute to discuss why there is water in the lines and why I believe my air dryer will be effective at removing much of it. Let's say the temperature of the air in my garage at normal pressure is 68 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity is 50%. Using a saturation vapor density chart, we can find that the maximum amount of water vapor that can be in the air at this temperature is 17 grams per cubic meter. However, since our air is only at 50% humidity, that means my air contains only half that amount of vapor, or about 8.5 grams. My air compressor is going to take that air out of the environment around it and put it under pressure inside the tank, say to 120 psi. This means that we're going to take both the air and the water vapor in it and put it in a space approximately eight times smaller. Viewed another way, we're taking eight cubic meters of air and the vapor in it and cramming it all into one cubic meter of space. Assuming no temperature change, because we're pretending our tank has had a chance to cool down, that one cubic meter can still hold only 17 grams of water vapor, but we actually have 68 grams of water vapor present now. We are also now at 100% relative humidity, and 51 grams of water vapor now has nowhere to go. It must rain inside your compressor, and this excess vapor condenses into liquid water resting at the bottom of the tank. However, the problem with the example above is that in a continuously running generator, the air in the tank doesn't always have a chance to cool down. It is hotter in the tank and as it leaves the tank. For example, at 105 degrees Fahrenheit, air can hold 51 grams of water vapor, a lot more than 17 grams at 68 degrees. Sure, a little of this vapor, about 17 grams, will condense in the compressor tank, but a lot is still left in the air. I have to find a way to cool it back down to room temperature before it hits my tools, or it could just blow right past my filters and condense when it's blowing out of the end of the paint gun. The most effective way to both cool the air and collect condensation is with an air dryer, but these can be expensive. Others use an after cooler installed between the compressor and the tank, and so I'll put a link in the description if you want to investigate that idea. Another option is to use either copper or black piping on the wall with drops for water collection, because these metals provide a lot of cool surface area to allow for condensation to occur as air travels along. I'm going to use that idea, but I want to save myself the work of wall mounting and soldering pipe together, and I want to allow for even more cooling by using a copper coil that I could submerge in an ice bath. The supplies I needed to complete this project are as follows. A five gallon bucket and half inch 20 foot copper L coil that you can find at a big box store. Two jumper hoses of two different lengths depending on the setup. Two half inch compression adapters. A threaded bulkhead fitting and a ball valve spigot with bulkhead fitting. Some half inch black pipe connectors including a T. A 10 foot water hose and ball valve and half-inch Milton G-style coupler and plug. I also needed a wall mount five gallon bucket holder, some punch flat bar, marine adhesive, thread sealant, and pipe thread tape, a one and a quarter inch spade bit, and a rivet gun and some pop rivets. To assemble the air dryer, the first step I took was to bend the 20 foot length of copper tubing coil into a size that would fit inside the five gallon bucket. I used one of my wife's pots to do this, but you could use any cylinder shape to wrap your coil. After this, I cut two sets of steel punch bar to size so that they would fit inside the five gallon bucket, one in a U shape and the other for stability, then drilled holes in order to rivet the two pieces together. Here's what the steel bar looked like inside the five gallon bucket. I made sure the copper tubing would fit inside this assembly. Next, I drilled a hole in my 5 gallon bucket in order to allow for water to be drained. The ice water that surrounds the copper tubing will cool the air as it passes through, and I wanted a way to drain this water when the air dryer wasn't in use. 
The ball valve spigot I used comes with a bulkhead fitting so that I could attach it to the bucket. I used threaded pipe tape as well as some marine sealant around the bulkhead to ensure that no leaks occurred. Next, it was time to drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket in order to allow for the compressed air to continue on its path. For this, I attached a 90 degree compression fitting to a water tank connector with a threaded bulkhead fitting, again while using both pipe thread tape and dope, as well as the marine sealant. This bulkhead will allow for black pipe fittings to be connected to the bottom. After the sealant dried, I did a water leak test on the bucket to make sure that both fittings wouldn't leak. I zip-tied the copper tubing to the flat bar assembly and made sure that the tubing had somewhat of a downward slant to it in order to allow for any condensed vapor that could accumulate inside the tubing to drain. I then connected the bottom part of the copper tubing to the 90 degree compression fitting and attached the black pipe fittings. You'll see I put in a T here. The idea is to allow for any collected water to funnel down to the bottom of the black pipe where it can be drained but for the compressed air to go out of the T and back up to the rest of my lines. At the bottom of the black pipe is a ball valve for draining purposes. Next, I attached a half inch compression to female NPT fitting at the top of the copper tubing. Then I attached my two jumper hoses, one to the top of the copper tubing and one at the aforementioned T at the bottom of the assembly. These hoses then have a Milton G style coupler and plug attached to them so that they can be easily attached and detached from my main air lines. After I mounted the bucket holder to the studs, I then placed the bucket assembly inside and attached both jumper hoses to my main air lines. So, here's the pathway for compressed air. As the air leaves my compressor, it first travels through a short section of black pipe to a regulator then enters the air cooler assembly, where it travels through ice-chilled copper tubing before heading back up to the main airlines feeding my sandblasting cabinet, paint guns, or other tools. After many uses of this air dryer, I can tell you that I rarely have ED water collected in my Ingersoll RAN filter and have not yet had to change the filter in my motor guard either. Well, this wraps up this two-part series. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.